Hi and welcome back. This is the equity curve of a live trading bot that I'm testing live on the market using Python. As we can see, it's a positive trend so far and the daily aggregated results are showing mostly positive trading days. Today, I will show you a live trading bot that I'm running using the strategy we introduced in the previous video. So we can test the strategy live on the market considering the spread, commissions and all the trading fees. We will see how to build a live trading bot in Python so you can run your automated trading strategies live on the market. If this is your first time on this channel, I usually share the Python code so you can download today's code from the link in the description of this video. And here's our plan for this session. First, we will pick an optimized and backtested strategy. Second, we will implement this strategy into our live trading bot that's connected to the market. We will let the strategy run for a few days and finally we will assess the results. So as you can see, this is a good way to test any strategy you have on real conditions and on new data. The strategy we will use today is the same we optimized in the previous video. So just a quick recap. We will detect the price trend relying on the exponential moving averages and we will choose our entry points using Bollinger Bands. For more details, please check my previous video. It shows how we define the functions related to the strategy and how we optimized it and backtested it for the best set of parameters. So in the backtest, the results reached 61% in returns on data covering almost 35 days of trading, so it's almost six weeks period. The stop loss is defined in relation to the ATR, the average through range, and the take profit value is also related to the stop loss distance, so indirectly to the ATR as well. Again, if you missed the previous video with the details and the optimization of the strategy, I will leave a link in the description so you can go back and watch the video and make sure that you didn't miss any information. Going back to the optimization backtest, we can notice that for almost 20 days we didn't have any profits. It's only by the end of the testing period that the strategy picked up a positive return. The reason I'm showing this is to manage expectations. We need to be aware that some weeks and some days might be negative and this is the nature of trading. However, sometimes we can get lucky and by the beginning of the live test, we would see immediately some positive results without having to wait for a few weeks or a few days. Now let's see the Python code, go through the functions and run our live test. But just before we do this, just before we start with the code walkthrough, it would be great if you will be testing the strategy on different assets. Please share some insights on your findings in the comments section. I'm curious how far we can take this one. So in the first cell, we're importing pandas, pandas technical analysis, the uh, scheduler, because this is what we'll be using to launch this function or this bot once every five minutes or once per day, depending on which time frame you're trading. And we're using Oanda, so we're using the Oanda's APIs version 2.0 and so on. So we are importing all of this. Then I'm defining the first function, which is the EMA signal. And this function is going to test if the fast EMA is below the uh, slow EMA, then it's going to return one, which means we are in a downtrend. In the opposite case, where the fast EMA is above the slow EMA, we return two, which is an uptrend. In any other case, we return zero. So that's the function that's going to take the data frame, a small data frame, take the current candles index and the number of back candles to consider for the uh, slow and fast EMA. So we need a slice of the data frame, including some back candles to be able to compute the uh, moving averages. The second function is the total signal. So it's going to compute the EMA signal. It's going to call the EMA signal. In case we have an uptrend, it's going to test if we are below or if a candle closes below the lower edge of the uh, Bollinger Bands. So if the current close price of the current candle is less or equal than the Bollinger Band in the current candle, then in this case we return two, which is our entry signal for a long position. In the opposite case, we need a downtrend and a closing or a candle closing above the upper edge of the Bollinger Band. And in this case, we return one, which means it's a sell signal or a short signal. In any other case, we return zero. So for this one, just based on the backtest of the previous video on this channel, I'm using the Bollinger Bands with length 15 and standard deviation of 1.5. If you're wondering why we use this, please visit the previous video. We have some optimization parameters that we are showing how it works and what was the best result we obtained for this set of parameters.
Okay, now since we're using Rwanda to connect to the market, you will need two things. The first one is an access token. And this one, you can usually generate it on the website or on the platform of Rwanda when you log into your account. And then you need your account ID as well, the account you're trading from. And now we can define a couple more functions that we're going to use for our training. The first one is get candles n. So all this function does, it's going to query the platform of Oanda or your broker, and it's going to download the number of candles that you're putting here as a parameter. So I can get the last 100 candles, the last 50 candles, or the last 20 candles, depending on the need of my trading system. In this case, we're testing it just to query the last three candles, just to see if it's working properly. And in case we have true here, so for candle, in candles, print, is the string candle.bid.open.o, meaning open position, greater than one. In this case, um, returning true. So we have true three times because we queried three candles. This is how I make sure that I'm connected through my access token and account ID and everything is working properly because these are used here to grab the candles from Wanda's platform. So for now, I know it's working. My token is working, my account ID is working, and I can carry on with my code. Then another function is count underscore opened trades. We're defining this function to count the number of open trades because we need to open one trade at a time. So we will need to count how many open trades are currently on the market relating related to the account we are using so far. So this is why we've defined this function. It uses the API, it uses the access token, the account ID, and it's going to request using client.requestr, meaning trades.opentrades for this particular account. So the account ID we're using here. And it's going to return the length of the response. So the length of these trades. Now this function get candles frame is going to get the last candle. So it's going to use the candle get candles function, the one that we've predefined here. It's going to transform the data of the candles into a data frame, into Panda's data frame with the open, close, high and low prices. So we're just reformatting the data in a, in a way, in a shape and in a way that would be easy to use just as a Panda's data frame. And then we're adding the ATR as a new column. We're using technical analysis, the TA, Panda's underscore TA. We're also computing the fast moving average, so of length 30 the uh, slow moving average of length 50, the RSI in case needed of length 10, and the Bollinger Bands length 15 and standard deviation 1.5. So this is where we pre-compute pretty much everything we need for the candles as classic technical indicators. Now we can define the trading job function. So in this function, we're going to aggregate everything together and execute our trades. So first of all, we're going to use the get candles frame. I'm querying 70 candles. So now we have a data frame. It's called DF stream. So a data frame with candles, open, low, high, closing price, the RSI, the ATR, fast and slow moving averages. So everything is done using this function and it's stored in the DF stream variable. Then we can compute the signal. So we call the total signal. We feed the data frame as a parameter, so the current data frame with the last 70 candles. Then we indicate the index of the current candle, which is the length of data frame stream, so DF stream minus one. And then this number seven is the number of back candles to consider for the signal. So uh, again, it's more detailed in the previous video, but in brief, we're using a number of back candles to test for a certain condition. So we're looking for the EMA fast to detect the trend. If it's below, for example, the slow EMA, we are in a downtrend, but it has to be below it for a number of back candles. Like here, it has to be for seven consecutive back candles. This condition should be true. This is why we use the keyword all. Only in this case, we are detecting a downtrend. This is a way to avoid noisy signals. And now we can define the stop loss related to the ATR. So it's equal to 1.1 times the current ATR value. And the take profit stop loss ratio is 1.5. And I'm defining a maximum spread, which is 16, 10 to minus five. This is only related to the Euro US dollar and depending on the account and the precision you're using for your trading account. But 
The reason I'm defining a maximum spread is because I don't want my bot to be trading when the spread is extremely large. So above this maximum spread limit, the bot will not be trading. And this is a condition I included here. So for both short and long positions. And then to, uh, to compute the spread, the current spread live, um, querying the open bid price and the open ask price and I'm computing the difference between these two so the ask and the bid price and this is what we consider the spread then for long positions so for buying positions we need a stop loss uh, value so it's going to be equal to the candle open bid price minus the stop loss ATR distance minus the spread this is where things become different from the back test we've introduced in the previous video we didn't consider the spread and here we are accounting for the spread. We are increasing the stop loss distance by the amount of the spread. Same thing for the short positions. We need a stop loss value, which is equal to the open uh, asking price. And because it's the highest value between the bid and ask, plus the stop loss related to the ATR. So the stop loss distance plus the spread value. Now, same thing for the take profit. The take profit is equal to the open ask price plus the stop loss ATR value distance times the take profit stop loss ratio plus the spread again. And for the short positions, take profit is the candle open price, but it's the bidding price minus the stop loss ATR um, distance times the take profit stop loss ratio minus the spread. And this is it basically. So once we have defined all of these parameters, now we just have to call the client API using the access token. And if the signal is equal to one and the count of currently open trades is equal to zero, meaning we don't have any open trades on the market. And at the same time, the spread is less than the maximum spread limit. We can open a short position with the um, minus 3000 units. We're using the euro US dollar, using the take profit um, value for the short positions and the stop loss value for the short positions as well. And whenever we have a buy signal, we use positive units so plus 3000 euro us dollar using the take profit the buy take profit or the long take profit and the uh, buy stop loss or the long stop loss for the sake of simplicity we're using fixed lot sizing so we're not using any uh, function or any formulas to change the lot sizes here depending on the trading conditions just for the sake of this video but it's working well so far we're going to let it run on the market and see what it gives then we can run a cron scheduler function add underscore job launching the trading job function which is defined right here and uh, it's from monday until friday from midnight until midnight and it's going to run once probing the market once every five minutes so at minute one minute six and so on why because we're using five minutes time frame strategy so there's no need to run more than one time every five minutes nothing's going to change on the market on the five minutes time frame. So I managed to download a CSV file with the uh, trades done so far. It wasn't running for a very long time now, so it's just a few days. But before that, I've been trying to uh, tune some parameters, especially regarding the uh, experimenting on the spread. But now it seems to be running in a stable way. So I downloaded the data, I did some quick analysis, and this is the equity we can see that we have some drawdowns some ups and downs but in general things are climbing in the positive trend now these are in dollars here so we can see how it's climbing from 144 dollars as an equity to 152 dropping down to 144 and so on today was a good day it's 158 dollars i think we've made 10 dollars in one day if i'm not mistaken and this is the equity by trade. So these are the trades. These are not the days. This is the number of trades. And this one right here is um, the aggregated results of trades per day. So this is positive in dollars again. So this is around $7 that day. This is minus $6. This is plus two and a half or plus three, uh, plus $1, $2. And uh, today was around a bit above $8. Now I'm intending to let this strategy run for a full month 
at least so we can gather enough data for a better analysis and I will get back to you in another video about it and show you where this strategy landed. So that's all for today. I hope you guys are happy with this one. It looks fine from my side. I don't know if you are enjoying this as much as I am, but if you decide to venture and try this code live on different assets, again, please share your findings. It would be nice to know how this strategy performs on different markets. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.